Welcome everybody to another episode of the Nonprofit Show. I'm delighted you are here because today is a special treat. We get to join one of the great minds of my community, Sam Alpert, who I've known for, you said 20 years, which I think was being oh. kind. I think it's more, but. <laughs> I think it's about <laughs> maybe 22. I remember going down to Mexico together when I was in the yeah. marketing world and yeah. doing a trip down there. So yeah. it's been yeah. a great relationship between us. It's been really fun and it's been just a joy to see you grow and mature. I think of you as a teenager when I met you. <laughs> and I am. You're a married man with a family and it's like, wow, what happened? But yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I still see myself as a teenager. Hey, you and me both. You <laughs> and me both. Well, we're going to talk about something really interesting today and that's the fundraiser's mindset. We talk about mindset a lot, you know, in the nonprofit space. And a lot of times we talk about it because um, working in this space can be perilous and can really, you know, cause havoc with our own self care. Um, and so I think this is a really good thing to be talking about so we can kind of look at maybe some skills, new skills, and kind of reorient ourselves to what it takes to be a fundraiser and what it takes to be a successful fundraiser. So Sam Alpert, president of Bear Fruit, is going to join us today as we kind of navigate this super interesting dis uh, discussion. I'm Julia Patrick, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy. Jarrett Ransom, the nonprofit nerd, will be back with us tomorrow. We have amazing sponsors that allow us to be here every day. They include Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, your part-time controller, nonprofit thought leader, Fundraising Academy at National University, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Nerd, and Nonprofit Tech Talk. Check these folks out. They support our mission and they support your mission. And we also come to you from so many different platforms that we've been building out, including our new sexy app that I just love. Thank you to the team at American Nonprofit Academy that created it for us. But you can find us on streaming platforms and podcasts. We'll go with you when and where you need us. We have nearly 900 episodes that will help you to do better with your nonprofit. Okay, Sam Alpert, I, I really can't believe that you are here with me having this discussion because it just seems like yesterday I met you, but yeah. it's, it's been several decades and I've, yeah. I've been able to see you flourish you come to us with a really interesting combination. We were talking about this in the green room chatter. You are a brilliant, brilliant mind when it comes to marketing and promotion, but then you have served in the nonprofit sector and you seem to marry those. Talk about what Bear Fruit does. Yeah, Bear Fruit is a, a new company of mine and the focus for me is on fundraising and marketing strategy grant writing and donor research for nonprofits, charities, and social impact organizations. Mm -hmm. And the focus, of course, is helping them raise more funds so they can make a greater impact on the communities they serve. Amazing. Yeah. It's, it's exciting for me. And, and the community piece is just in me. It's, it's in my DNA. I, I grew up in it. I've been working in communities since I was a kid. And so to me, bear fruit is sort of a culmination and combination of everything I've done over the past 22, 25 years of my life. That's amazing. You know, are you surprised um, as you've taken this journey? And I know you have a philanthropic heart. You come from a family and you have an Arizona legacy of, of uh, philanthropy. Do you feel that we are talking about these things separately and not coming together with this? as much as we should, or what's the ecosystem of, of fundraising and marketing? What are, where does it stand today? I mean, it's gotta be together, doesn't it? Yeah. You gotta, you gotta be able to communicate your message clearly to the right audiences. And oftentimes, no, not oftentimes, always you, you need funding, yeah. you know, no, no, no money, no mission, the cliche in this industry, it's true, but you've got to be able to communicate the need well and effectively across multiple channels mm -hmm. and you have to demonstrate your impact on the communities you serve which of course gets a funder to, to take notice and hopefully invest in what you're doing now and in the future right so it me, really, it goes together it does go together and i i love the this conversation that we're going to have because 
I also feel, and I, I've noticed this, and I'm sure you must have seen this too, that even within our own organizations, we kind of have a prejudice about what everybody does. And that bias oftentimes looks like this. Oh, those people in development, they just go to parties and they just go out to lunch and they just, you know, socialize and ask for money, right? And that <laughs> there's, there's not this like true understanding of what goes on and what it takes the mindset to be engaged in fundraising. So I want to really start there with you and you advise us that mindset is everything in life yep. and fundraising. What do you mean by that? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to make the case that the mindset is the most important in general in your life and in the fundraising community. It's a challenging job, you know, there's minimal resources, we work long hours, there's a perception of charities and nonprofits and, and, you know, the amount of money that comes in and what people are paid in nonprofits and what amount should go to programming. And so you've got to have the right mindset to keep doing the work mm -hmm. and whatever that means to you. To me, it's a mindset of the optimism that you're trying to solve very complex issues that have not been solved yet and will not be solved anytime soon. We're talking about poverty or homelessness or any number of causes that are really challenging to look at and need a combination of organizations solving it. So you've got to have that mindset to say, okay, this can be done. We can find the resources to fuel the impact on the communities we serve. There's a resilience component to it. Yeah. And, and what I've thought about recently, maybe because of the pandemic too, you've got to understand your own values and your own purpose in life. Yeah. And you have to align that to the organization or organizations that you're representing because you've got to believe in what they're doing. And if you believe, then that helps you stick around a longer period of time because it takes time to raise good money. You know, I in all the the, the guests that we've had on, I mean, done nearly 900 shows. I do a lot of public speaking. I work with a lot of groups. I've never really heard somebody articulate that as beautifully as you just did. Because I think sometimes we expect our teams, you know, we're like, come on, buck up. You should believe in this, you know, saddle up right away. You know, we don't, we don't come back and say, look, we know this is hard. What can we do? to help facilitate a stronger mindset and help us navigate this. It seems to me, Sam, and, and before we go further, it seems to me like we are just, we expect to burn up people and just burn them out and move them on and bring somebody else new. Yeah, and I don't know the current stat on this, but you know, for a while, the turnover on the development side, what, 18 months? 18, 18 months? months, you go from place to place, yeah. you just burn out completely and you change careers. Yeah. That can't work because I meet you today. I've got to cultivate that relationship. It could take me three years for you to consider investing at the right level, whatever that means. So it, it takes time and you've got to, of course, pour into yourself. So the whole work-life balance, I mean, that's cliche, but I, I believe in that. And so whatever that means for you, if that means, you know, you've got to have your exercise on a daily basis and that gets your energy out so that you can come into work feeling good. You've got to have maybe your family life set or taking care of your kids. So whatever that means to the individual, we have to pay attention to that because if we don't pour into ourselves, it's going to be really hard in the workplace to keep going after, you know, the relationships and trying to seek the funding because it never ends. Right. No, it never ends. I love that you, you really um, highlight that and start with that, with, this conversation today. Another piece of this that you advise us is the long-term mindset. Now yeah. you just brought that statistic up, which I absolutely can't stand it. It comes from AFP, 18 months is the average tenure time of a development officer in America. It's horrible because you are right. We need more time. Yeah, I, I mean, I and I think, I think it's a combination of things of why we have that statistic. It could be expectations from the team within the nonprofit. I want you to raise another million dollars this year or in 12 yeah. months or it's the board's yeah. expectations, or maybe it's your own expectations. <clears throat> and that's what makes it hard. So the expectations have to be aligned in general. And it's, it's 
to me, a long-term view of things. I mean, I was lucky enough to work for a great organization, Junior Achievement, for 10 years. Yeah. My first full-time development role. Why did I stay 10 years? I believed in the cause and I wanted to help the kids. That was my obligation, was to help the kids. Now, my job was to do the to do fundraising, but I really wanted to help the kids. And so that helped, kept me there. And so that's back to the core values, yeah. but it's also the long-term view of things. You know, you're constantly planting seeds. Mm -hmm. Planting never ends mm -hmm. and they bear fruit over time. Mm -hmm. Hence the name of my company. I mean, that was really sort of the, the concept and the theme is that you've got to be planting seeds and you've got to be persistent, which I know we'll talk about to make sure those seeds bear fruit the right way. I love it. So let's talk about that because persistence is sometimes a, we get a bad rap in that in the nonprofit sector because it seems a little too maybe hardcore or too salesy when we're talking about fundraising. And we I think we, we, we try to step around that. Um, yeah. I know one of our great partners at uh, Fundraising Academy at National University, they use that phrase cause selling to try and help us to get over that hump of of what occurs when we sell or we, we make a transaction, if you will, or we build a donor investment relationship. But part of this is persistence. And you, you mentioned that planting the seed, what does that look like? And how do we do that when we have such a failure of tenure in our, in our sector? Yeah. Well, so I think the sales techniques translate into the nonprofit space. To me, the difference is the finesse around it. It's a, it's a finesse game and it's a relationship game, of course. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's pretty obvious, but you've got to have the right follow-up and the persistence knowing that it's just going to take a long time. There's nothing quick in this business at all. And you've got to follow up the right way. And it's very nuanced. Yeah. I have to understand the relationships at a deeper level, personally and professionally, to be able to follow up the right way, be persistent with someone the right way. It's all, it's all a people game. Mm -hmm. And I can't do it in a way that is too aggressive, that turns someone off. I mean, this isn't... Now, to use a bad analogy, this isn't used car sales where you're just I was thinking the same thing. yeah. <laughs> I think what people think they think of sales, they think of used car, yeah. like it turns people off. Yeah. The bottom line is it's an it's an alignment game too. Mm -hmm. yes. What does a person or an organization or an entity want to do in the community, want to do philanthropically? What do you do as an organization from a mission standpoint? Align the two. And aligning the two could take time. I mean, if you just look at grants in general, you could find an opportunity, submit a grant. It could take six, seven, eight months for it to fulfill for the investment to come or no investment to come. Okay. And you got to fall the right way there. And that's just one example. So to me, the persistence is so key on a day-to-day -day basis, mm -hmm. but you've got to do it with finesse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. It also seems to me that this tags into leadership because they're going to be dark days when there are the wolves at the door and you've got your, you know, finance accounting department saying, oh my God, we can't make payroll or we can't, you know, we got to cut programming. And then it's just, it can easily become such a negative um, thing. And before we go further, do you have some tips or some ideas for us of how we can support persistence without making it seem like we're just going up against yet again, another brick wall. Yeah. I mean, to me, it goes back to the relationships again, and you've got to be able to build those strong relationships. I mean, you and I may be an example. We don't work day to day. We don't see each other maybe for months, but we have a relationship because we've spent time building that relationship for you say more than 20 years. So a long period of time, and you've got to understand that the relationships never go anywhere. Yeah. You have them for life. And, you don't want to burn bridges. And sometimes, you know, given the world that we live in as human beings, sometimes it happens where the communication is not good and people, you know, hear it a different way and the relationships fall apart. But it's about the relationships and the understanding of the people. I would say maybe more on a personal level. You know, I know you have a daughter. I know your husband. I know what you like and what you don't like. And so that helps me be persistent with you the right way mm -hmm. and come at you at the right time for, I'm going to say maybe more selfish reasons, like, you know, I'm, I'm representing an organization or organizations and I need something from you, but 
my view is more reciprocal. Mm -hmm. how, do, how do we help each other? Mm -hmm. And so I think that's a big part of the persistence as well. You know, I think that, that one of the things that we forget in when we're talking about fundraising and we're talking about, I, use, I love you use the word alignment, in that I, I think we need to be remind, remind, mindful and reminding ourselves that we are a conduit to joy in philanthropy. Okay. That, when, that when we enable people to connect with this donor investment, and change lives and have impact. That's really a powerful gift. Yeah. You know? And I think that's a really cool thing. And maybe that's like a Pollyanna approach, but I do believe that, you know, that we, we can be those shepherds to living a better, more fulfilling life uh, with, with the resources that, you know, some of us have been able to acquire, no matter the size, small or large. I totally agree with that. In my own philosophy, it's, it's an obligation for us. Yeah. It's an obligation to give back if you have any sort of resources. Yeah. I'm not saying you need to be wealthy, but if you if you know what you have compared to all the people in the world that don't have much of anything, mm -hmm. to me, it's an obligation for us to give back. Now, that, that doesn't have to be monetary all the time. Yeah. Yeah. It could be your time. It could be your expertise. It could be your mentorship. It could be your money. It could be a combination of those. Just showing up. It, it is definitely an obligation to me, for me personally, to give back, knowing that my life has been easy. When I look around what's happening in the world or happening in the, in the community, I, I know that my life is good. So I want to help others. Right, right. And I think that's a it's a powerful piece of, of the uh, pie. And I think that probably, again, to that mindset speaking on, on how that can lead you through those tougher times because not everybody you meet is going to be like oh my gosh i love you yes you know <laughs> I, I, and i don't think that happens it's more of not right now or no this isn't a fit it's more of that than yes let's do it let's make the investment i want to partner with your organization right. help whomever it may be and so you've got to be you've got to know that it's a lot of no's all the time and that's okay yeah. That's okay. You're still representing a cause or causes that you believe in that you care about. Mm -hmm. And if, if that's deep, it makes it easier to hear the nose. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with, I love that you said that it makes it easier to hear the nose. And I, I think too, in sales, you know, there's something about me that I can hear. It's, it's no right now. Yeah. And maybe it's, it's, it's a yes down the road or around the corner or with another resource. So I think that's, Again, that goes to a mindset thing. Let's talk a little bit about vision and execute mindset because that gets down into uh, looking at our process in a little bit different manner. What does that look like to you? Yeah, you obviously have to know where you're going. You know, I talked to someone the other day that wanted to go from three hundred thousand dollars in revenue to, to two million dollars in revenue. Okay, so that's a that's the monetary goal. That's however many years out. The execution to me is more important. Mm -hmm. Yes, you have to know where you're going, but it's the process piece. Mm -hmm. It's the detail oriented pieces. Mm -hmm. It's having complementary skill sets around you. You've got a, you know, data or marketing or the fundraising and the ask. Mm -hmm. You've got, you know, um, the technology piece of things. There's a combination of things and you have to know that the process is to me is more important than necessarily the vision piece. I'm not saying no vision at all, but right. if you get the process down the right way and you and you work well as a team, if you have a team, then the good results will come. You know, per perfect the whole perfect practice cliche. I yes. totally, I totally believe in that. Uh -huh. And it's a constant refinement all the time. It's it's never static. You're always adapting. You're always refining. Especially, I mean, given the last three four years, just the yeah. environment overall you have to adapt really quickly. Yeah. So. You know, I think you have to not be afraid of that change. Yeah. I, mean, I think that's a big thing is, is flexible thinking as my sister always says, and really, you know, embracing this is a time for a new thought or yeah. let's try something new and not being afraid to fail. And yeah. I think that's change is probably the hardest. Yeah. And for me, it, it was hard. I mean, it was hard 
just given my my tenure as a junior achievement, it was hard for me to make a change because I I poured my heart and soul into the organization. And a, and a lot of us do in this space because the passion is there and the altruism is, altruism is there. And you just want to help all the time. And that can be very exhausting. Mm -hmm. But you've got to be able to change on a dime quickly. I mean, the idea of doing a plan and, and the plan is for the next year. I, I don't believe in that. It's, it's, you know, it's almost every couple of months you're refining, refining maybe on a weekly basis, mm -hmm. depending on what you hear, you know, from donors or within your organization or the clients you serve. It's constant. When you talk about that, um, do you see that this is just born of, COVID or do you, would you have said the same thing before 2020? Yeah, I think I say it more now. Yeah. Uh, if, if I'm thinking about that question. Yeah. Because it, it was such, such an unusual time for everyone. No yeah. one expected this. The world turned upside down and you've got the, the political stuff and you've got the racism and everything at one, at one point in time. So I probably would say that more now. I mean, that's something that I've learned in the, in the past couple of years of, how to be even more adaptable right because we've all forced been forced to be more adaptable in general so yeah i think it's i think it's more of that and i if i'm looking back be, you know before 2020 i probably wish i would have been more adaptable <laughs> at that time. So. i know you know and i i always think and i don't know what what you have to say about this but it seems to me that the nonprofit sector is like so inflexible I and mean, we're the last ones to adopt new things to, to make changes i mean we work from such a point a reference point of scarcity and fear and so gosh why does know? it have to be that way though it, it, it it's got to be an abundance mindset in general and the problems we're trying to solve are so important yeah they impact every aspect of all of our lives in general yeah so I, I agree with you on that. We we've got to change the sort of the perception of the nonprofit industry and how non nonprofit people see it. Like it's so incredibly valuable what we all do, and and, and amazing and fulfilling. It's it's a it's a great space to be in. It really is. You know, 1.8 million nonprofits are registered in the U.S. Um, if you think about the millions of people that go to work every Monday. Uh, to a nonprofit, you know, that's serving in some capacity. It is a remarkable workforce. It is a remarkable input um, into, you know, our social structure and how we get things done. Um, so it, it is uh, really impactful. And so to have this discussion with you today has been really lovely and to kind of reframe about mindset looking at how we can all be fundraisers. Um, yeah. I, I'm concerned when I see an organization and it's like development is in that building, <laughs> you know, and, and yeah. they're not, you know, the sense of the, oh, that's their job, but yeah. it really is all of our job. And, um, and so I love that you, you could share with us today some of this, this uh, insight that you've developed over the years. You know, before we let you go, Talk to us a little bit more in depth about Bear Fruits. I think we've got a good picture today about your direction and your sentiment. But where does Bear Fruit engage? Like, what yeah. are the sorts of things? Because you talked about grants in the green. Yeah. Room. Yeah, I, I think it could be a couple of ways. I mean, it depends on the organization and the teams within an organization. So our services could fill a gap. You know, we don't have a grant writer on staff or we don't have someone to think through the fundraising strategy. OK, we can help there or we already have a team and we want to augment what we're doing. We want to, we want to raise more money. I mean, mm -hmm. we always want to ra raise more money. So there's always a need there in general. And I think it depends on the skill set within an organization. Maybe the, the writing is not a skill set that an organization has. So they're going to outsource it, mm -hmm. which is a common practice in our industry. And there are a lot of grant firms or solopreneurs that are doing an amazing job. And there are a lot of opportunities out there to seek more funding. I mean, to me, the, the mindset is that it's never enough. And you got to be careful with that mindset because it can exhaust you, but it's never <laughs> enough funding and there's more to, to be had and we're worthy of receiving that funding. Mm -hmm. So I think it can go both ways. And what I, what I and our company want to bring is that hunger 
you know, and that passion to, to go after it, to be aggressive, but in the right way, not aggressive in a negative way, but just, just always looking for opportunities yeah. to get investment in the mission so that organizations can serve the communities they want to serve. Mm -hmm. I love that. And I love that approach. And I think that that's been one of the things um, that's been a silver lining to the pandemic is, and then this change, the shift in labor is yeah. uh, the nonprofit sectors. Um, it, is, it seems like we're more open to bringing in outside experts and not just making do with the, the small team that we have, but being more open to bringing in experts um, that, that help us guide us maybe march with us for a period of time or maybe just for a short period of time you know a long versus short term um and so oh, yeah. I think it's, yeah i think it's a it's a good thing for uh this concept to really be out there and to be a part of a resource uh for any size uh nonprofit. um sam alpert president of bear fruit bearfruit.co i've known this man for 20 i say more than 20 years um so i can <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm in my 20s, so I must have met you like at preschool or something. <laughs> That's about right. <laughs> but no, this has been a great joy to see you grow um, your profession and your career. Um, I can certainly vouch for Sam Alpert. I've seen his beautiful work and his commuted, committed work throughout our community and in, in many forms and fashion. So check out barefruit.com.co, excuse me, if you're looking for somebody to help you maybe refine a piece of that that puzzle that seems to be daunting i think sometimes getting that outside voice is just magical and it can really kind of help you figure out where you need to invest in and what you need to work on sam this has been amazing i need to make sure we get you back um, as as you roll along and uh, have you share with us even more of your insights thank you thanks julia congrats to you and all of your success over the years appreciate well, thank it you. it's been a lot of fun um because i know people like you hey <laughs> <laughs> again i'm julia patrick ceo of the american nonprofit academy Jarrett ransom the nonprofit nerd and ceo of the raven group will be back with us tomorrow again we have partners that march along this journey with us and i want to make sure that we really um, express our gratitude to them uh they include wonderful organizations such as Bloomerang Fundraising Academy at National University, Nonprofit Thought Leader, American Nonprofit Academy, Your Part-Time Controller, Nonprofit Tech Talk, Nonprofit Nerd, and Staffing Boutique. These are the folks that join us day in and day out so that we can have really cool conversations with folks like Sam Alpert. So again check them out because they are part of our ecosystem and they can be part of your ecosystem as well hey sam today is the start of a day you are going to go out there my friend i'm sure and do some great things and i can't wait to hear more about bear fruit and all the things that you help uh, to achieve in in the nonprofit sector so thank you very much thanks, Julia. thanks for having me on i appreciate it it's been a lot of fun hey everybody everybody every day we end our episode with this message and it goes like this to remember to stay well so you can do well we'll see you back here tomorrow everyone